Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another real-time edit. This time I got another one of my photos here. I'm just going to bounce back and forth between my photos and user submitted photos just so I can kind of mix things up a little bit as we go. As always, real quick, I'm just going to do a quick plug if you're interested in learning exactly how I do what I do in these videos because I know I do them quick. Simply, these videos are just meant to show you what's possible, give you some ideas for your own post-processing. But if you're not familiar with how to do these things and you want to learn, head on over to rayhennessy.com. Go up to the Learn menu, All Online Classes. You can find my Learn Wildlife Photography Online, Photoshop, Lightroom, and mentorships as well. Uh, these online um, post-processing for Photoshop and Lightroom courses can be bought in a bundle as well if you're interested in both of them. And then one more thing, I just want to really mention how much I'm happy with and excited to share this Learn Wildlife Photography course. It's basically like being on a workshop with me. You get to look over the lens, see the habitat and lighting. You get to see through the lens as I'm shooting, see all the decisions I'm making as well as camera settings, focus, all that stuff. And I narrate it. So I tell you exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and what it's going to help me achieve as I'm doing it. And then you get to see me call the photos, pick out the good ones, and then edit them. So you basically get to see from capture all the way through to the finished edited image. Um, and it's all for teaching purposes. So it's step by step. I'm telling you exactly what I'm doing. It's the best way to learn wildlife photography with me. If you can't be out with me in person, then I would actually argue it's a little bit easier because you can rewatch things over and over again and see the techniques. You can watch a sample lesson here. It's only 27 bucks a month, super cheap, and you get access to all these lessons, over 130 videos already. And I'm adding two new lessons every month. You can even see right here some of the upcoming lessons. All right, so let's get back to this photo. This is actually one of them that is in that course. So let me reset this without any edits. So if you want to watch me take this photo and see me capture this, sign up for that course. All right, so let's straighten it out first. And then, yeah, I'm just going to crop out. Oh, I hate when this thing gets unlocked. There we go. I'm just going to crop out that other bird. And I'm going to come in a little tighter because I don't want that super bright sky up at the top. So something like that is feeling pretty good. What else to do on this? I do want to leave the background a little darker. I'm going to crop in just a little bit because there was that one little like bokeh ball up at the top there. All right, so let's see if a subject select will pick this up. I don't know if it will. Not bad, but we'll subtract out all those bubbles that it grabbed. And let's see, this is where it gets potentially weird. So I'm going to lift up the whites and the highlights just to kind of get that bird lit up a little bit more. And then I'll drop the blacks to maintain contrast. What I don't want to do is that. It just doesn't look real. Like, yes, great, the bird stands out more, but it doesn't fit in the scene anymore. It just makes no logical sense that the bird should be that lit on my side versus the background. So I got to leave this bird darker because I shot it that way. You know, So something like that looks pretty good. I think the rest can happen in Photoshop. It's fun to see his foot up like that. And it's also really neat to see the bird's own shadow on the surface of the water there. So I'm going to start with a retouch and just get rid of some of these more obnoxious kind of out of place bubbles and stuff there that I just don't think are adding anything to it. I like having the lighter ones right there, but just a few of these are just kind of really bright and distracting off on those outer edges. And I'll just tone those down over there. That's the bill reflecting right there, which is cool. And then this just little, oops. So you got to make sure you do it just right. Don't want to make it all darker up there. And then there's just one little like sparkle hanging up in the middle of the air there. All right. Do a little bit of dodge here. I'm just going to try and lighten the eye slightly. This is going to be challenging to make look realistic. That's way too far. So I'm just going to come back off of it now lightly. There we go. With the um, painting with black. All right, so that's the beauty of these masks, right? Uh, I'm going to use color range to s try and select these outside light areas there. Let's see. There we go. That's got it. Just drop that a little bit. That should be pretty good. Let's see. Just a little bit more in there. I want to get all of that, that kind of edge lit up. And then watch. I'm just going to kind of brighten that up and enhance that rim light around the bird. Should be able to catch a little bit down there. Maybe even some across the back there. Yeah, these spots. Oops, a little too much there, but that one can take it. Good. I deselected. I got rid of the selection. It was hidden to begin with, even though there was a selection going there. And now I'm just going to manually paint in this stuff here. 
nice small brush. And I'm probably down at like two or three pixels or something like that. Let's see. Yeah, three pixels now. And this is the boring part, right? But I got to say, there's no way that I know of still, even with the subject selecting and all that stuff, there's no easy way to get it to select just that kind of glow right there. I'm going to try and complete the glow along the top there. And then maybe just a little bit more along the head. Oops. Went out into the background a bit much there, so I'll fix that. All right. Um, I think let's also just lean into that that sort of sun flare, right? I think that's a nice element to it. So we'll kind of lean into that there and that there. I really like what that's doing. Not sure if you guys are hearing the water. A boat went by. I'm just parked by a mangrove swamp down here in Florida right now. All right. Before, after... Let's see if we can just punch up the like the wings a little bit more. So a little bit more contrast and then just the tiniest bit more red to get those pink feathers to really shine. There we go. We'll do a little bit of that in the head there. That's better. I like that. Before, after. That's pretty cool. I'm happy with that one. All right, so let me save this and get back to... Lightroom, I'll reset the original so you can see the before and after on that. And again, just a reminder, if you want to watch me capture this, sign up for the Learn Wildlife Photos thing. Or if you're interested in just the post-processing side of things only, go ahead and sign up for either the Lightroom or Photoshop course or both. All right, so the main difference here, right? Not a huge difference in the edit. We definitely have the bird standing out more. We can see a little bit more detail on the bird, which is great. But it's generally keeping in line with what was captured, but getting rid of that sky was the key. Um, I left a little bit of it. I think I shot it. Yeah, I was at 400 millimeters, so I couldn't zoom in anymore on that lens. So that's why I didn't zoom in a little bit tighter, or else I probably would have tried to crop out the sky. But I knew I could just crop it in post, and it's not that much of a crop. So we end up with that. There's the final image. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Tune in next week. I'll have another one with a user-submitted photo.